God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching, and it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for, that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray. And then we'll get right into this lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come before you and to come before your people once again. I ask that you touch me, Lord. Touch my mind, my mouth, my words, my thoughts, my heart. As that which I teach goes forth to the ear gates of the people that you want to bless. Lord, I know that some of the people that hear this lesson will already have received salvation from you, but there are others who don't know you. Lord, I know that you want them to know you, and I pray that you use me to speak to them about what it is you want them to know. Lord, we want to bring forth the clear message that we should be withholding nothing from you, surrendering all to you, including the tithe and including our lives, and that we should take nothing for granted, Lord, even the smallest of things. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and I thank you for what you're about to say. Amen. The word and, A-N-D, is often overlooked, but is a powerful bridge and should never be ignored. It's a small, short word that after a pause, connects important events, or coming attractions, if you will, to the things that you've already been informed of. And lets you know that something else needs to be explored. That something is on the way. And that whatever you were just talking about or reading about isn't finished yet. A-N-D deserves your undivided attention, your respect, even your childlike curiosity. It is this three-letter word that helps us to prepare for the unknown in hopes that we may attain more because the word is not usually deployed as an indication that there will be less. And, A-N-D, is a word that is usually taken for granted. And this huge mistake of a habit that most of us are guilty of often also causes us to overlook the very blessings that the word and was trying to pave the way for us to receive. In this episode, keep in mind that it is God, not man, that is making the promises. When he uses the word and, it's because he has placed an addition 
not only to the former words that he has spoken, but also to the things that he will do. God and what he speaks are one. All we have to do is follow the instructions or the path that he lays out, and he will take care of the rest. Hopefully, you will never overlook or look at the word and the same way again. When God says and, it is not an afterthought. Now more than any other time used in communication, the word and is a conjunction, meaning that its job and deliberate use is to keep you flowing in the context of the conversation that was begun by the subject matter already established. Whatever comes after and is not a change of subject, but is relevant and an important part of what you were already told. And is not just a conjunction. It's a coordinating conjunction, which means that it will not only carry you over from the starting point or the midpoint to the end, but that the next thing that is to be said is equally as important as the first thing that was spoken, regardless of the order of the things you were told. The importance or purpose of spending this time on the word and, A-N-D, was an exercise in renewing the mind. We have pointed out time and time again the arrogance and pride of men. It is this darkness that causes us to say one thing while doing something completely different. An example of this would be how our mouths say that we are well aware that we don't know everything, yet more often than not our actions tell a completely different story. We are very quick to flare up and demonstrate our disagreement or disapproval of something, even making a scene when deep down inside we are sure that we know very little about the matter. Holy scriptures are real life actual historical events, but they don't get broadcasted or talked about in everyday mainstream media. So most people never view these facts as anything other than myths, fables, and bedtime stories. Life-altering, game-changing truths and lessons are there for the taking, but without someone leading you to where you can be fed, just as in the natural, you can be within walking distance of the very food that would save your life, yet go hungry and starve to death because you didn't know that the meal could be within reach. It's time to focus and sober your heart and mind so that your ear gates will be receptive. You won't remember everything that you're about to hear and it's too important to take a chance on losing the revelation when it comes. Make ready your pencil and paper. You are now listening to episode 24 of Understanding the Tithe. The title of this lesson is The Things You Take for Granted. Your scriptures are Genesis 8 and 22, Leviticus 27 and 30, Malachi 
3 and 11. Romans 12 and 2. And 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8. Your scriptures again are Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. We've talked about God's perfect will and what God allows. How obedience to Him is an act of casting your cares on Him, knowing that He loves you and is able to care for you in every area of your life. We've talked about the system and principle which is the tithe and how the tithe is alive and well. We've even pointed out that the reason that God is ready, willing, and able to release the ten blessing benefits of the tithe to those who are obedient is because He has already incorporated the move of the blessings within the law of the tithe. Remember, we're not going back to the argument and false belief that this provision system created by God to benefit man is limited to being under a legalistic time period. The tithe is a law in and of itself, just like there are laws of nature. And no, there is no such thing as Mother Nature. If we are ever to graduate into the nourishment of the meat of the Word that God has laid before us, we absolutely must get rid of our superstitions. Laziness and the advantages of privilege cause many of us to take God, His Word, and His blessings for granted. We need to regularly examine ourselves to see if our hearts and thoughts line up with what God defines as thankful and humble. When things are going well, we get so full of ourselves, thinking that what we've been blessed with will remain forever until we don't even look to help others because we just assume that everybody likes what we like, has what we have, believes what we believe, and thinks the way that we think. Stop occasionally and remind yourself that the world doesn't revolve around you. Spend time with God in His Word, and He'll show you some things yet that you didn't know. The work of your hands is not protected and secure by you and your greatness. It's all held together by the grace, principles, and favor of God. Remember, you don't have to be saved for God to place favor on your life. But who in their right mind, which is a renewed mind, wouldn't want to be in a loving personal relationship with God? God may have been blessing you and covering you for years by not allowing Satan to destroy the fruits of your labor, but without the promise of the tithe, there is no guarantee that he will continue. The results of your hard work will not be destroyed. The fruits of your ground will stand the tests of attacks, guaranteed 
when you are a 10 percenter. You have spent time building a good name and a reputation. You've built integrity, character, a livelihood, even your peace of mind. But Satan is taking direct aim at every single area of your life. He seeks to destroy the friendships and relationships that you've established, some of which help to position and stabilize you living where and the way that you do. Everything belongs to God. You and I are just stewards. The question is, are you a good steward? Submitting your will and gifts to God? Or are you a bad steward? One who has convinced himself or herself that you've done everything by your own power and that you really don't need God. In our last episode, we shined the searchlight of truth on Satan so that you could see him clearly as the devourer and destroyer that he is. He knows that as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. You should know it too. As this episode is being completed and scheduled for release, look around you, open your eyes. You can see for yourself the challenges, transition, and troubles that are going on. And you don't have to look very hard to find them. God is not a liar. Many who have lived well by God's grace were never living under the covering of his promise. What seeds did they plant? What seeds have you planted? Time has passed. And now comes harvest. Ask yourself, does the earth still remain? Well, I promised way back in episode one that I would not try to tell you whether you should or shouldn't be a tither. That's not my assignment. My commission is to make this principle of tithing plain and simple. So simple that just about anyone could understand it. And that's what I have been doing my best to accomplish. You and only you will be responsible for what happens in the many seen and unseen areas of your spiritual and natural life. God requires that each individual return to him and he has promised to return unto you. Your mother, father, sister, brother, nor spouse can be a tither for you. Yes, generations are affected and may benefit from the overflow because the tither didn't have enough room to receive it all. But what happens to the individual who got used to living in the residual overflow when the overflow life that they took for granted runs out? Remember, no one gets to ride off of the coattail of a tither forever. God's system was designed for individual responsibility. Let's be clear. If you are going to live well and be covered as you are in the tithing overflow, you're going to have to become a tither, a 10 percenter yourself. And it's not a system that you can visit to occasionally make a deposit in. Just like a farmer whose planting or sowing and reaping is his livelihood 
you will have to commit, not by conforming to the fake rituals of this world, but by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. The tie, without question, belongs to God. Even though this teaching was not centered around God's gift of salvation, salvation is an absolute must for eternal life and to be in the perfect will of God. I invite you to make Jesus the Christ your Lord, Savior, and King. Please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you whether I have been faking it, whether I have convinced myself that I'm saved, but deep down in my heart, I know I am not. This day, I am choosing who I will serve. I confess with my own mouth, according to your word in Romans 10, 8 through 15, that Jesus the Christ is the son of the one and only true and living God. I accept him as my Lord, Savior, Master, and King. I renounce and denounce all other things, all other gods, all sin that has ever been in my life, and everything wrong that I have practiced. I understand according to your word in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, that I can only be saved by grace through faith. Lord, all I have is the faith that you have given me. And I use that faith to do the best that I can to understand your grace, accepting and receiving your gift of salvation right now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, only you know whether or not you've been fed by the meat of these lessons. If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, Please send your contributions through our PayPal. The link is listed below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series, When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you.